video spin. Welcome to Divine Christian Church, a Christian fellowship where we serve God in spirit and in truth. John 4, 23 to 24. And be his true ambassadors here on the earth. Objective number one is to show us how we may counsel others when the need arises. We already said we are ambassadors and we already know that we are Christians. So people are looking up to us. So it's not just for us to only know uh, how we can manage situations. It's also for us to be to know how to counsel people when they come to ask us what we think as Christians. Hallelujah. So what is the context? The context is taken from uh, Jesus admonishes us to be words salt and light to the earth. Hallelujah. Can somebody please open up Matthew chapter 5? Let us be scriptures. Matthew chapter 5 and very soon we are going to open it up for discussion so let's get ready. It's going to be a very interesting time of conversation. We are going to talk and have real practical conversations here. Hallelujah. Matthew chapter 5 and we can somebody read for us verses 13 to 16. Matthew chapter 5, verses 13 to 16. Any volunteers to read for us, please? Go on, sir. Hallelujah. You are the salt of the earth. Mm -hmm. But if the salt loses its flavor, mm -hmm. how shall it be seasoned? Mm -hmm. It is then good for nothing mm -hmm. but to be thrown out and trampled on the foot by men. Mm -hmm. You are the light of the world. Yes, sir. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor do they lack of a lamp and put it under a basket. Mm -hmm. But a lamp stands and it gives light to all who are in the house. Hallelujah. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good work and glorify your Father in heaven. Thank you so much, sir. Teacher, God bless you, sir. Let's so, so number one, God describes us as salt of the earth. We know that already. Number two, Jesus then tells us that we are the light of the world. Number three, he said it's not just being the light. He said we can't afford to be the light and be hidden. What does that mean? So we're not just Christians for our own self. We are first Christians for ourselves, Christians for our families, and Christians for our neighbors and Christians to our world. Hallelujah. That is why Jesus said that a light is not lit in up and hidden, put under a bushel. The whole point of light is not so that men can see. So you and I are light, and if we are light, we are not just light for our own self, we are light to be light towards others. Hallelujah. We are what? Light and also to be light to who? To others. Praise God. Next, sir, brother Henry, the next one, sir. Okay. Now, what does this mean? What does this really mean? It simply means that we should live a Christ like lifestyle that will produce good image for Christ. We should do what? Live a good Christ like lifestyle that will produce good image for Christ. It also means living an exemplary life. Jesus is what? Our standard and our model. Hallelujah. You ask our young boys who is your football model? 
He said, Christian, no, 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 no. I asked my boy there, who is here in Christian? And his football star will say, Cristiano Ronaldo, Mbappe, hallelujah. But us as believers, Jesus is what? Our model. But Jesus himself, Jesus himself models himself to the world through, through us so that we are epistles to the world. Jesus models himself through us. Jesus is the model of the Christian. But we the Christians are what? The model to the world. We are what? The epistles. Now, let's look at scripture. I said, then the last one said, and in the process, positively publicize Christianity. So instead of bringing the name of the Lord to the world by our behavior, our behavior should publicize Christianity in a positive way. Second Corinthians chapter 3, let us read verses 1 to 6. We are going to throw it open soon, so we can start having conversation. Second Corinthians chapter 3, can somebody volunteer to read for us verses 1 to 6? Second Corinthians chapter 3, can somebody volunteer to read verses 1 to 6? Do we also? begin again to command ourselves, commend ourselves, mm -hmm. or do we need as some others episodes of command? condemnation to you or letters of commendations for me. You are our epistles written in our hearts, known and read by all men. Clearly you are an epistle of Christ, ministered by us, written not with ink, but by the Spirit of the living God, not on tablets of stone, but on tablets of flesh that is from the heart. Yes. To verse 6. And we have such trust through Christ towards God. Mm -hmm. Five, not that we are sufficient of our own selves to think of anything as being from ourselves, but our sufficiency is from God, who are also made us sufficient as ministers of the new covenant, not of the letter, but the spirit. For the letter kills, but the spirit gives life. Thank you so much, sir. So we sit there, God bless you, sir. Whereas Jesus is our model, we are the model of the world, to the world. So Jesus views himself in us, and then people can read Jesus in us. That is why here in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, Apostle Paul is saying that the world, we are the Jesus that people can read. The world does not know Jesus. It is only when we become spiritual that we can begin to understand Jesus. The only thing the world understands is the physical environment around them. When you and I become born again, we are both physical, physical people here and also spiritual people as well. That is why Ephesians chapter 2 verse 6 says that we are seated in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So we are in this world physically but we are predominantly living in the spiritual realm. And so, because the worldly people cannot engage with spiritual things, because spiritually, uh, spiritual things are spiritually discerned, they need some physical existence to help them understand Jesus Christ. And that is exactly what Apostle Paul is telling us in 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 3. He said, we are the epistles. You are now already know Christ, but the world does not know Christ. So we can be the epistle that the world can read. Then Matthew chapter 7, verses 15 to 21. Matthew chapter 7, verses 15 to 21. The Bible there, Jesus there tells us that by our fruits we shall be known by our lifestyle, by the things we do, by how we carry ourselves, by how we relate our, to people, 
through our conduct, we shall be known. And by the way, those of us who are just coming, this life, we have shared it on our Divine Christian Church WhatsApp group, so you should be able to assess this as well. Then, James chapter 2, verses 14 to 20. James chapter 2, verses 14 to 20. Somebody can read quickly again. So, faith is demonstrated in works. Also, the evidence of the life of God in a believer is demonstrated by action. Our faith without work is dead. The light in us cannot be light unless it is matched up by actions. James chapter 2, verses 14 to 20. Uh, any other volunteer to read for us? Brad TJ, you've done a lot of reading. God bless you, sir. I'd like another volunteer, please, apart from Brad TJ, to read James chapter 2, verses 14 to 20. Episode of James God, sir. Even so, faith, if it has not worked, mm -hmm. is dead, being a dog. Mm -hmm. Yet a man may say, Thou hast faith, mm -hmm. and I have works. Yet it show me thy faith without works, mm -hmm. and I will show thee my faith by my works. Mm -hmm. Thou believest that there is no God, that does not, that does it work. The devil also believe and tremble. Mm -hmm. And dwell thou know, O vain man, that faith without work is dead. Thank you, sir. Thank you. So, the way faith without work is dead. So it is also that if Jesus says we are light, our light should have some actions. If our light is not producing actions, it's like saying we have faith without evidence of proving the faith. If we say we have faith, and a cockroach or a, 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 a cockroach or maybe uh, just lost past here, and all of us say blood of Jesus, and some of us are hanging on this uh, uh, air conditioner. That is not faith. So if we are the light, and of course we are light when we come born again, our lifestyle and our action should reflect that. Hallelujah. Now the last one is Acts of the Apostle, chapter 11. Acts of the Apostle, chapter 11, verses 19 to 26. Acts of the Apostle, chapter 11, verses 19 to 26. The believers were called Christians for the first time in the city of Antioch because of their lifestyle. The light of God and the life of believers will shine forth. And now when the work of God was manifested in them, now they didn't have to even tell the people they are Christians. It was the people that eventually called them Christians. Acts 11 Verses 19 to 26. Can somebody read that for us quickly? Please. Acts of the Apostle, chapter 11, verses 19 to 26. Any volunteers that haven't read for us, please read for us. Acts chapter 11, verses 19 to 26. Hallelujah. God's definition. That I know that I could be traveled as far as Kobe and Cyprus and Antio, preaching the word to the kingdom of the people the Jews from the world. And some of them were men of Cyprus and Cyprus, which when they were come to Antio, sent God to the nation, preaching the Lord Jesus. And the land of the world was eternal, and a great number believed and taught unto the world. Then tidings of these things came unto the ears of the church which was in Jerusalem, and they sent forth Barnabas, that he should go as far as Antioch, who when he came and obtained the grace of him, was glad and devoted them all, that he spoke of as a great of the Lord. For he was a good man, and full of Holy Ghost, and faith, and much people were carried of him. Then he carried Barnabas to, to Tarsus, for to seek soul. And when he found him, they brought him unto Antioch, and it came to pass that the whole day they assembled themselves in the church, and taught much people, and in fact, we are all Christians. Thank you very much.
and the disciples were what? Called Christians, first in where? Antioch. But then they saw the light of God manifested in the life of the believers. In the life of those early church believers, they saw an extraordinary light of God manifesting through them. Brother Henry, can you go to the next slide, sir? Okay, now we're going to take some case studies. So these case studies, we are going to discuss it. This is where the discussion starts now. The light of the world. So we are going to take a case study to be able to have a proper conversation around what we have discussed. Are we happy with that? Are we happy with that? Okay, so the first case study. You are in a queue in a grocery shop, in Tesco, in Aldi, in Waitrose, Harrods, anywhere you like. You are in a queue in a grocery shop and an unbeliever jumps the queue and comes right in front of you in the queue. You ask him politely to respect the queue and to go and queue behind. He becomes aggressive and starts swearing at you. As a believer, what should you do at this point? You are in your favorite shop. Maybe you are you use Waitrose. Maybe you don't like this anymore. You are using Harrods. Or maybe you are like me that go to Little or Aldi. I don't mind. Anyone you use. And you're in the queue. All of a sudden, somebody just enters, jumps in your front, and you are standing. And you, it's not the right thing, I did it to queue properly. And you said, Please, politely, can you go back and queue behind me because it's appropriate for you to respect the queue. And the man turns around, even though you addressed him politely and became aggressive towards you and started swearing at you. What should you do? A. Give him a piece of your mind with proper tongue lashing and swear back at him. Did you see the A? Give him what? A piece of your mind with proper tongue lashing and swear back at him. Matthew chapter 5. Then use the scripture Matthew chapter 5, verse 38 to 41. Somebody read for us. Sister Ibrahim, God bless you, man. We're doing our Sunday school. You're welcome, man. Thank you. Matthew chapter 5, verses 38 to 41. You use that scripture. Somebody read that for us, please. Anybody can read this time, please, so we can move into it. Matthew chapter 5, yeah. verses 13 to 41. Go, sir. He have heard that it has been said, an eye to an eye, and a tooth for a tooth. But I have said unto you that he resists not evil, but also shall smith. Smith, thee on the right cheek, turn to, the, turn to him the other also. And if any man will sue thee as the Lord, and take away thy coat, let him have thy coat also. And whosoever shall compel thee to get a mind, go with go with two. What do you want to do? Right, sir. Thank you, sir. Brother Christopher, we appreciate you, sir. Okay, what is the, the number A? Is that the correct answer? No. What's wrong with number A? Answer A. Let's talk now. What was wrong with answer A? But for the person, that, sorry, but you, you spoke politely to this person, the person did the wrong thing, he jumped in your front, and then you didn't, you, you spoke politely to this person, and then instead of the person to behave, they turn around, they become aggressive against you, they start swearing at you. Then you now, gave them a piece of your mind, and you lash properly on them, and then you swore back at them. So is number A the right answer? 
Brother Owen, you are going to say something. What's wrong with it? And if it's, if it's the right answer, tell us if the right answer. And why is the right answer? If it's the wrong answer, say it's the wrong answer and tell us why. Go on, sir. Well, I have to give a reasons why I'm giving this conclusion. Because yes, two sir. rights, two wrongs doesn't make a right. Yes, sir. And it depends on the individual because each and every one of us have been controlling what we do. If he had no knowledge of how to control himself respectively in a public order, then we have to find some um, diplomatic way of how you reach over to it. If he doesn't, because there's two laws in this world, man's law and God's law. You could be living by God's law, but he's living by man's law. Man's law is temporary. Today is here, tomorrow is gone. So it's a very complex Hey, very, very complex. It depends on the individual. Definitely. If you think psychologically you can get a chance to be able to reach out to the individual so you have an understanding which is right from wrong, yeah. then yes. Thank you so much, sir. I really appreciate that. Is that is about individual and the psychological side of it. If you have a way of reaching that individual, reach that individual. Bravo, we appreciate it, sir. Any more thoughts, please? Oh, mommy, just go for it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As children of God, they are called us as the people of the Spirit. I want to be people of the Spirit to be patient. If any of us have been able to eat me, we have patience with you, and you get to be patient with me to be able to be with you. So I think you can see that is the right time. You don't think it's the right answer. Thank you very much, man. So, Mommy Joy says she thinks it's not the, the right answer because uh, patience is the fruit of the Spirit. So, we're supposed to deal with people patiently and not respond to them according to their actions, especially when they're not believers. Any more thoughts before we go to answer B? Bratidius, I was also thinking that scripture, Matthew 5, 38. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. If you. If you answer that chap in the supermarket, that means you are going for the an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. <laughs> okay. So, but we are Christian. We have to not, those who persecute us, we have to pray for them. We have to forgive our enemies. Yeah. So, this is going back to the world. We have to copy the model of Jesus. We are Christ-like Christians. So, therefore, we have to demonstrate, show that standard of a Christian by um, Christ life. Thank you so much, Batij. Fantastic. Tit for tat is when we were doing the what's it called? The uh, the journey to eternity. We spoke about tit for tat. Tit for tat is the Old Testament dispensation. An eye for an eye, a hand for a hand, a head for a head. Head good person. What somebody head good you was head good them seven times. That is in the Old Testament. You see that? Okay. Good point. Any more before we go to uh, answer number B? There's quite a lot of blood to cover here. Any more thoughts? I think this answer already. It's answered already. Thank you, sir. But I told you go on far away. Thank you, Christopher. Yes. <laughs> Sorry, uh, do the listener is somehow uh, died. I, let them use the word died somehow. Sorry, by the way, you're on our DCC platform. No, not at all. Okay, we can put you there now so that you can, because we're already sharing the platform, but continue, sir, please. Yeah, I was just like, what uh, sir said. Yes, sir. Uh, in terms of Christianity, we all know that I may have well, allowed it to let go. But if I should, you know, flash back on what Jesus Christ did. Yes, sir. You know, when uh, there was a kind of shit going on in his father's house. Yes, sir. We all know what he did. Because of what they were doing something wrong at that particular time. He made them understand that treating with his father's house is very wrong. Yes. And he scattered everything. So in that situation, I think I, <laughs> that's why I say someone dies. Will you probably head put him or something? I'm, I'm, I'm joking, I'm joking. I'm joking. Why are we slightly? I'm joking, I'm joking. At a point in time, yeah. I should let him know that this thing is going to be very wrong. Okay. So that he would know the things he did. Okay. But if you should like, okay, let it go because uh, probably, you know, God things and all those things. Well, if I want to do it again. So uh, that's why I say so much. So knowing where to draw the boundary. 
<laughs> Fantastic. God bless you, sir. God bless you, sir. Okay, if there are no more thoughts, we are going to go to number B. So answer number B has a very important thing I want us to draw out. So answer number B says, who shared, oh, you're not on our WhatsApp group, we shared this slide on our WhatsApp group, is that event. So if you would like us to include you on the WhatsApp group, yeah. so that when we share these studies, you can have them for yourself and read. Okay. Then let me know after the service and I will include you on the WhatsApp group, okay? okay. All right now. Number B says, push him out of the queue and be ready to fight if he continues being rude. After all, the Bible says, the violence taken it by force. Can somebody read Matthew 11, 12 for us, please? Matthew chapter 11 and verse 12. Please read that for us quickly. And from the days of John the Baptist, until now the kingdom of heaven suffered violence, and the violence taken it by force. God bless you, my sister Joy. God bless you, my That is Matthew chapter 11 and verse 12. So answer number B says, Push him out of the queue and be ready to fight if he continues to be rude. After all, the Bible said the violence taken by force. What do we think about this answer? Any thoughts? Can you tell us that this is the day of John the Baptist, that the violence is the one. I am going to say, God, this is the day of John the Baptist. Jobs. I thought it was that. We have to do our jobs. Okay, brother. What do you think, sir? Thank you, sir. What do you think, sir? Can, can, can I be practical here? Yes, sir. Yes. I can remember when I was about 15 years old. Yes, and sir. Obviously, I was brought up a Christian and I was in school and they saw something about me that they wanted was to find out. Yes, sir. And they put me in a boxing ring. Yes, I thought about you, sir. And I, and I was boxing against this little boy, which I was beating him at the time. And something said to me, he's back. And I did. And yeah. when I, he's back, and I can show you the proof, it's in my teeth, it's one of my teeth, it's the way he is. And I dropped my guard. Yeah. And he punched me in my face. And he said to me, when you're boxing, keep your guard up. Yeah, that's the point. So you never know. There's so many individual, and yeah. as, uh, Jesus says, "Forgive them, Father, because they know not what they've done." Yeah, and the majority of people yeah. don't know what they do. Yeah, when they're not a Christian. Yes, sir. We are studying the Christianity right now yes, because sir. we're trying to get an equally equally equilibrium so we can travel the right path. You're right, sir. I mean, Thank you so much, sir, but because of time, I think there's something that you are right, sir. Be on your guard, make sure somebody don't punch you down and floor you completely. What I wanted to bring out here, Matthew 11, 12 says, from the time we joined the Baptist until now, the kingdom of God's corporate bonus, the father was taken by God. But the scripture does not apply, it is not what it means here. So when the Bible talks about spiritual violence, he talked about taking authority in the realm of the spirit. But here we're talking about you get ready to fight. Okay, supposing you start fighting, I'm a pastor, for example, you come into Max and Spencer, and me and somebody are fighting physically. If I start here preaching to you tomorrow, would you, how would you look at me? And I said, I'm going to fight because Bible says, from the time I joined the Baptist, the kingdom of God taken by force, so I'm taking it by force, and I'm physically sad. Maybe by the time you go there, some of my clothes have been ripped off, still torn. My jeans is torn. When I start preaching here the next Sunday, how would you look at me? So, what that answer B is trying to bring out is that sometimes people misapply scripture. Yeah. You see that? So, we have to be very careful not to misapply scripture. I do not think under any circumstance we should fight. No. Unless maybe our life or the life of our children are at risk. At that point, we can do something to physically restrain somebody from either maybe attacking our wife or attacking our children. If it hasn't gone to that point, as much as it is within our power, we must not engage in physical fight. Does that make sense? Because of time again, Let's go to answer C. Answer C says, Curse him in the name of the Lord. 
to become paralyzed. After all, the Bible is saying for us to cause our enemies quickly. Let's spend one minute on this because there's another case study. What do we think? Cause him in the name of the Lord to become paralyzed immediately. No. After all, <laughs> I agree. Okay, okay, let's, let's move now. That is not true. So this one said is not in the Bible, as it were. The Bible didn't say anywhere we should cause our enemies quickly. And so when we say, the Bible says, cause them very quickly, it's not what the Bible says. God punishes and, 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 and causes uh, people, but God gives people, even God gives people long growth before he causes them. So that word quickly is what I was looking out for. Causing very quickly. If under that kind of temperamental atmosphere we go and curse somebody, we would have done that in anger. Don't forget, there is no righteousness in anger. So that is what I'm trying to bring out. That sometimes the devil misapplies scripture or even tells us something that is not in the Bible and make it look as if it is biblical. So that C is not biblical. Then answer number D. Answer number D. Calmly request him to take proper tone in Q. If he continues to refuse and be abusive, then seek the intervention of a store assistant or manager. Matthew chapter 10 verse 16, that is based upon that. So we don't, I agree, somebody said we can't just let people march on us and ride over us because we are Christians, but there's a more Christ-like way of being assertive without bringing the name of Jesus Christ to the mud. Matthew chapter 10 and verse 16, what does it say? Somebody real quickly, let us take the second case study. And Lord, I send you out as sheep in the midst of wolves. Uh -huh. Therefore be wise as serpents and harmless as dogs. Fantastic, thank you. Be wise as serpents, but be innocent as a dog. So there is a time we need to, like somebody talking being assertive. We can't afford to be aggressive as Christians, but we can be assertive. So the Bible says, if somebody slap us here, turn the other one, I won't turn like that too. <laughs> because I can some wicked people will slap you, you turn the other side, they slap you. Before you know, all your shit are red. And some kind of slap can take somebody's teeth away. <laughs> you want to keep your teeth, please. <laughs> so if you want to run, you run. <laughs> or try and stop the person from slapping us as a minimum. So for me, I wouldn't stand for somebody to slap me and I thought they slap me. When I reach out, I'm not be sure it again. It's not, it's not nice, brethren. Okay? So you can learn how to get the balance. Brother Henry, go to the second case study. Let's put the hand up, please. So the second case study. Your family friend, Johnson, and his wife, your family friend, Johnson, and his wife, Florence, have just informed you that they will be going to see a juju priest to help them solve some financial and dream attacks related problems they are currently going through. What will you counsel them? The family friend keeps saying, ah, this thing, problem, problem, everything, problem, every problem, uh, attack, attack, attack. We are thinking about going to see a juju priest. What are you going to counsel them? So now we're talking about how we can deal with matters by ourselves. Remember, people look up to us. So somebody came and said, maybe somebody in the church, maybe a similar brother in the church. Answer number one, quickly, we're going to finish with the course of time. Answer number one, will you tell them, my brother, my sister, please do what you have to do. After all, the Bible says, God help those that help themselves. But just make sure that pastor does not hear about it. My brother, my sister, please do what you have to do. After all, the Bible says, 
God has to help themselves. But just make sure pastor does not hear about it. What do we think very quickly because we're finishing the next one minute? Sister Eva, go, man. That's all that is lying to what they've just said. Thank you, man. Lie! The Bible, there's no way the Bible says go help those that help themselves. That is what the secular parable. You see again? People, the devil can enter somebody's mouth or people's mouth to make things look as if there's no way the Bible, the Bible says God help those that help. It's not scriptural. Number one. Number two, uh, uh, after all, God has no, 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 no. Luke chapter 12, 1 to 3, quickly, please. Luke 12, 1 to 3. So, let's make sure that when we're counseling people, we're counseling, we're counseling on scriptures, but also make sure that we don't say what is called the scripture and make it look as if it's in scriptures. Luke chapter 12. But it's one to pray. Put it this. In the meantime, when an innumerable multitude of people had gathered together, so they trampled on one another, he began to say to his disciples, First of all, beware of the leavens of the Pharisees, which are his hypocrisy. For there is nothing covered that will not be revealed, nor hidden that will not be known. Therefore, whatever you have spoken in the dark will be heard in the light. And what you have spoken in the air, in the inner rooms, will be proclaimed on the house top. Thank you, sir. You know, do you know what I say in that scripture? Do what you have to do, but make sure pastor does not hear. Make sure the church brethren does not hear. The Bible says there is nothing that is hidden that shall not be revealed. Everything shall be revealed by fire. So that answer, obviously, is what? Not correct. Answer B, we are running out because of time. Answer B. Answer B says, that's okay, since you are doing it to help yourself. After all, God is the same everywhere. Just make sure you, you do not kill someone. That's all. What do we think? God is the same everywhere. You are doing it to help yourself. You are not doing it to kill yourself or to kill somebody else. In one minute, please, what do we think about answer B? Is that the kind of answer we should be giving to somebody who is coming to ask for help from us? Why is it wrong? Is God the same everywhere? It's not the same everywhere. I mean, it's the God that the Jewish people call upon, is it the same God that we call? No. It's not the same God that we call. But you hear people say, it's the same God all of us are calling. The shrine are not calling the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The old jam, they are not calling the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Marine spirit, familiar spirit. In fact, the Bible says those that practice sorcery and familiar spirit should be stoned. So we're completely different. Scriptures. Ah, okay. We can't read this one now because of time. We have to start by 10. Exodus chapter 20, verses 1 to 6. When God gave the Ten Commandments, He said, We should serve no other God beside Him. John chapter 10, verses 1 to 5. He says, Jesus is the way, is the sheep, the way to the, to the shepherd, to, to the sheepfold. He said, any person who tries to enter through any other means is what? A thief. So somebody is going to you to solve a problem is entering through the John chapter 10, 1 to 5. Somebody put at this. John chapter 5, John chapter 10, 1 to 5. Put this. So we can round up and start starting the service. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. God bless you, my sister. God bless you. So, 
going to that juju priest or doing some other. So this one is juju priest. It cannot be like circumventing, committing fraud, stealing, lying, cheating. So those ones are like trying to achieve something through the back door. Jesus said people that try to do such things are thieves because they are trying to use what? The back door. Hallelujah. Then number C, answer number C. My brother and my sister, please do not go to the Jewish priest because that is idol worship. Wait upon God and he will do it in his time and his plan. What do we think? Do we think that's the right answer to give? Sure. Yes, yeah, sure. Very obvious. Wait upon him, he will do it. Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 11. We're going to finish it because of time. Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 11. God makes all things beautiful in his own time. God bless you, man. Habakkuk chapter 2, verses 1 to 3. The right division down. The door it tarries, wait for it, it shall surely come to pass. It will not tarry. Psalm 125. Those that put Psalm 125, verses 1 to 5, those that put their trust in the Lord can never be put to shame. Amen. Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 to 6, wait upon the Lord. Do not lean on your own understanding. God answers prayer request according to his plan and the way he chooses. A problem arises if we want God to answer our prayer request exactly the way we want him to. God sits in the heavenly places, he does as he chooses, and nobody can say to the potter, or a clay cannot say to the potter, what do us down. The last one, Romans chapter 10. Romans chapter 10, verses 11 to 13. A part of that Romans chapter 10 says, those that put their trust in the Lord can never be put to shame. The next slide, Abraham, is up, please. Okay, so I think we are really pressed with time now and we must really stop here. But if anybody has one personal experience or question they want to answer, they want to ask, either a question you want to ask or a personal experience you want to share, can we take that from just one person because of time and then we can round up? Any question that anybody has or any personal experience they want to share, you could do that very quickly, just one person only, so that we can also round up. Next week, we probably will have a bit of more time. Any questions? I would like to share uh, John 651 to our present topic, the world, light of the world. John 651 says, I am the living bread mm. which came down from heaven. Yes. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. Oh. And the bread that I shall give is my flesh, mm. which I shall give for life of the world. Amen, sir. So, <laughs> Come on, let's give Jesus a good round of applause. Come on, clap for Jesus. Clap for Jesus. Clap for Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you so much. The Son is giving his flesh and is the bread of the world. So you take his flesh, eat his flesh, and let's desist from the world and what they did in Jesus' name. Amen. I beg you, we need to stop here. We'll be joined in one second. Do you want to pray and write up for us? So next Sunday, please, let's try to get here for 9 o'clock. We are picking up a very interesting topic next Sunday. And then we are going to produce more um, visuals, more graphics. It won't just be text, we are going to produce more graphics next Sunday. But please, let's end up here so we can try the service. Mommy Joy, pray for us in one second, please. Amen. 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 Amen.
Amen. Video Snake.